Hello and welcome. In this video lecture, what I would like to introduce you all to is the idea of issuing SQL queries to that require multiple tables to answer. And you know, eventually we will step right into the uh, SQL commands that you need to issue and the things you need to consider. But before we do that, I want to tie it back to the efforts we've been making to uh, understand the issues related to translation because it is the process of translation and the resultant uh, division of information across multiple tables and the linkages among those tables that really drives the issues in SQL. So this video will have two parts. The first is review of the translation issue using the, an example and then the second is going into uh, MySQL directly and issuing queries uh, based on this example. I've created an example database with some information related to this. So let's go through the ER diagram first then the translation really quickly because you've seen this example before. Okay, so we got the following situation. Employee, I bet you can even guess for, works for a department. Okay. And let's say, given an incident of an employee can work for at most one department, nobody works for more than one department. A given department has working for it, of course, many have multiple employees, most do in fact. And so let's apply the mapped translation. And we will do the following. We will say, okay, the N side entity can include the relationship, okay? And if we were doing math with total partial, we wouldn't do this because the participation here is not full, but we won't worry about that. Long story short, we map the relationship to the inside entity, and we're left with the following tables. Let's do the department first because that's easy. We'll have a department table. It will have a D number as a primary key. Each department has a department number and a D name and a location. Okay. And other, th and other things in reality, but it's a simplified example. And then we'll have the employee table, a little more complicated because we have this relationship in there as well. So, but let's start simple. We have not an employee number, but rather we'd probably call it a social security number, SSN, as the primary key. And let's say name and salary. And those are the things that are native to the employee, but because we're including the responsibility for the relationship in with the employee, we need to provide the linkage back to the department table. And we do that by including as a foreign key, the department table's primary key. So we would put D number, department number in here, not as a primary key, but a foreign key. And I wish that would stop, but it's not, okay. And this of course refers back, this is, this is foreign or visiting in the employee table it references back natively to the primary key in the department table. Okay, So this is our relational schema for this example. So let's take a break here and fire up uh, MySQL and take a look at an instantiation of these two tables and what we need to do to get the information that's spread across them meaningfully joined back together again. So hang on one second for that. Okay, so here we are in MySQL, uh, and let me describe the two tables that correspond to our relational schema that we developed in the prior section of this lecture. So we'll describe employee, and lo and behold, we have primary key, social security number, and we have employee name, salary, and department number. Department number being the foreign key to the department table, so let's describe uh, department. And there's department number as a primary key, and that's what the department number in, in employee corresponds to. And we have department name and location. Now let's actually look at the data. So let's select all from employee. No, not select eight from employee, select all from employee. Notice that selecting a literal just gives you as many instances of that literal as there are records in the table. That's not terribly useful. All right, much better. Select all from employee. We've got, oh, geez, Louise. Yes, I guess we'd better. I don't know. Do anything. Just stop making me do that prompt. Okay, bear with me. Just one second. Uh, okay. Come on, shell in a box. There we go. Okay. So we got Albert's ones. 
He's in Department 3. we got Betty, the 2s. She's in Department 3, too. And we got Charles and Darlene, 3s and 4s, respectively, in Department 2. Okay, so let's take a look at Departments. Select all from Department. And we've got Department 1, Accounting, in Philly. Doesn't look like anybody works there right now. We've got, it says something about participation. Not what we're talking about here, though. We've got Department 2, which Charles and Darlene work for. That's a distribution in Houston. And we have Department 3, that Albert and Betty work for. That's marketing here in Philadelphia. So, okay, now we know who's looking where. So suppose our charge is to return all the people who work in marketing, their names and their department names and, or actually let's take a step back and say let's just have a directory of every employee, their name, and their department. Okay, so it's a very similar select statement that we've done in the past except historically we've always done uh, just one table. But let's work through it intuitively, and let me warn you in advance that this is not going to give us our right answers, but uh, it will illustrate an important point. So we'll just select, same as always, and what are we looking for? We're looking for department name. Uh, sorry, that's DPT name. And we are looking for, oh, let's say, uh, what do we call employee name? Employee name? Emptying. Okay, good. So let's select emp name and department name from and here we just could add a comma separated list of multiple tables from employee that's where you get employee name and department that's where you get department name right and we give that terminating semicolon and we let her rip and we get Albert in accounting, Albert in distribution, Albert in marketing, Betty in accounting, Betty in distribution, Betty in marketing, Charles in accounting, Charles in distribution, Charles in marketing, and the same thing for Darlene. So obviously that information is incorrect. We know it's incorrect. It's a bunch of hooey. What we've gotten here is what's known from this query is what's known as a Cartesian product. Our Cartesian product is occasionally a useful thing to do, and you needn't worry about the terminology, but what the database management system has done is taken every instance of the attribute in the employee table and crammed it against every instance of the department name attribute in the department table giving you a bunch of nonsense All right. so if we modify this query slightly and say select all from employee and department we get something that's a little more useful for our purposes in that we can see right here is department number from employee and here is department number from department. Notice that for all of the bogus records uh, there's a mismatch. So when this department does not equal this department the record is faulty and so what we need to do is amend our query so that we can get rid of those records. Now how do you suppose we do that? If we're looking only for those records where this attribute is common or equal across those, well, heck, let's just specify exactly that. And lo and behold, that's, uh, that is what we do. It works just fine. And once we bring my cursor back into the window, we can go back and say, okay, so we got select all from employee common department, but we need a condition. We need to say where employees department number is equal to departments department number. We're specifying that we only want these records like this where this number is exactly the same because those are the records that actually reflect reality. So with that additional condition lo and behold we get exactly the information we're looking for. Here's Albert working in the marketing department and Betty in marketing and Charles and Darlene in distribution our world makes sense we can high-five and go out for burgers and drinks okay so that is the essence of joining information together now a couple things about syntax to take note of in our case here the attribute that acts as primary key in one table and foreign key in the other table is exactly the same. It's DEPT underscore num in both tables. When that happens, 
you need to do what we did here. Employee, we have to specify first the table, then the dot operator, which is basically a, a, a joining, and then the attribute in question. If we don't do that, there's ambiguity about which department number we're talking about, and ambiguity makes the computer uh, angry. And so we can see an instance of that. If we just say where department number equals department number, it's going to say, hold the phone here, folks. Department number is ambiguous in our WHERE clause, and I cannot stand that. So if you run up against that, that's why. Now, the other thing to note is we could call this one department number, or DEPT number, and this one department underscore NO. Or you can call you could call this one Cindy if you want it. Doesn't make any difference what the attribute names are. You specify what is appropriate to join to what. And that's good, that's convenient, uh, but it's also something that cuts both ways. We should only ever engage in this sort of join when we are joining a foreign key to its underlying corresponding primary key. That that way we know we will get meaningful information. But you don't have to. You could join a department number to a social security number. And if those happen to be equivalent, you would get a match. And you would think, hey, I found something useful and legitimate. And you didn't. So it's up to you, as the query designer, to make sure that the join that you're doing makes legitimate sense. OK, one last thing, which is a question of terminology. The join that we just learned how to do is the most common join that we have. It is called a natural join. It is based on equality. We are setting the condition in the WHERE clause to be equals. And it is based on wanting only instances where you have a result in both columns and the result is the same. Okay, And the, at least semantically, the two attributes are exactly the same as well. Like I said, they could have different names. So that's a natural join. It is a specific instance of an inner join. We can also do outer joins. And we will talk about them later on in the, in the course. That is a situation where we want an instance of one table, whether or not it has an exact match in the second table. But that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Right now, all I want you to take away from this is the idea that we need to add an additional condition, a join condition, to get meaningful information brought back together across multiple tables. That should be all you need for the next SQL homework. And uh, we'll get a little bit more complicated later on. Hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, or if it wasn't, study hard, and I will see you online.